Welcome back dividend and value investors. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I am European dividend growth investor. In today's video, I would like to provide an update on the five oil majors, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, Total Energies, and BP. How has a $100 oil price helped them and are they still buy worthy today? That's really the question that I would like to answer today. And for my long-term followers, you probably remember that I did a video about them last year announcing that they are finally back. We are one year further now and honestly, I couldn't have predicted the current oil prices we are seeing right now. So it's about time to revisit them. You consider this video therefore also as an update. Having said that, let's get started. So look guys, it should come as no surprise, ExxonMobil and the other companies, they've really had a record year if we look at the share price. 68% up from last year, about the time I made my video for the first time announcing that oil is back. Of course, the dividend yield was much higher and such, but it doesn't mean that these companies aren't investable right now. I know that generally people say like, you should buy them at the bottom of a cycle, that's true, but there are many dividend investors that don't own any oil yet. And still, you can buy them still at a fair price, right? And that's also one of the questions I would also like to answer today. So look, I'm going to compare these five oil majors here. And what is good to know is that if you look at the market cap approximately, ExxonMobil is the biggest with almost 400 billion. NPP is the smallest with approximately 100 billion in pounds. Keep this just in mind, maybe if I'm talking about buybacks or something like that, that, you know, depending on the market cap, it has a different impact, right? Now, there are a few key metrics that I look into when I'm analyzing a company from a fundamental point of view. The first one is the balance sheet strength. And what really stands out here is the strength of Chevron. Eight and a half percent net debt to total equity. I mean, this is almost like triple A grade balance sheet, the same for ExxonMobil with 13. And what we can see here is just that our US oil majors have a much better balance sheet than the European equivalents. But look at what it was last year, 26% for ExxonMobil. They halved their debt in a single year. Look at Chevron, a third to what it was compared a year ago. Shell, also a big reduction of 8%. Total Energies also almost halved it and BP is the only one that reduced it just a little bit compared to the others but they had a major write off on the Russian assets also in the second quarter. Uh, this means that their book value, their equity went down and that's why you see this but we will see later in the cash flow numbers that they have been actually paying off a lot of debt. So guys they have a really strong balance sheet right now. These are like tech company balance sheets almost with such little debt compared to their equity. So they've really done well over the last year. You can see really here that they've been using the cash that it was coming in with these oil prices really to pay down debt. And this is what we want to see with these oil companies. Second that I look at is like, what is the oil price impact? Now, from the break even points and these numbers are hard to find honestly so take these with a grain of salt but ExxonMobil is predicted to have a 41 oil price uh, break even point Chevron a little bit more expensive total en energies looks really cheap but they are talking here about a pre-dividend break even price honestly if you're a listener and you know what this exactly means let me know um, I don't trust this number too much but it comes out of their report um, BP is saying around 35, but think about Brent oil here. It's not the same as WTI. At that moment in time, there was also a different euro, let's say versus dollar currency. So probably it's approximately the same when you think about it. And from Shell, I couldn't find the numbers. But if you then look at the average oil prices realized last year, and this is what I took out of the oil, uh, out of the annual reports, you need to think here about January this year. It's approximately, let's say, around 65 dollars. So you know, we have now been talking about $100 in the last quarter. So, of course, that's why we saw massive, massive earnings coming in and cash flows coming in, which is doing these companies really right, well, right? And we are talking here about these debt numbers after the last quarter. So the earnings from last week and the weeks before, those are the numbers that we're looking at. Now, if we then look at uh, investments, because, you know, we're looking at oil prices, but, you know, they also need to secure the future. What really surprised me here is that the year equivalents are investing more at the moment. If we look at the CAPEX, 
uh, from an operational cash flow point of view. Now, actually, it doesn't really come as a surprise because what I've observed over the last two, three years is that the European oil majors are much more aggressive on the uh, energy transition. It doesn't mean that they invest the majority of their uh, cash flow into, for instance, uh, new energy, but they are investing more in it. And you can see it here from Total Energy. They are saying here that they have probably a peak oil production around 2025, but they are using gas as a transition fuel. And you can see that here, expecting it to grow until 2030. And in the meantime, they are growing their electricity from renewables quite significantly until 2030. So this is really how they are trying to transition their portfolio. And if we look at Shell, they are doing something similar. So what's important here from cash capital expenditure, the base capex to sustain our strategy is expected 19 to 22 billion per annum. Yeah, so think about making sure that they can still produce oil and such. But also here they look at peak oil and try to shift away into more cleaner energies. So they expect their cash capex to grow to 23 to 27 billion going forward. And they expect more than half of the additional capex to be expected to be spent on their growth business. Now, what is their growth business? Let's look here also at their annual report again, which is called the section of portfolio and business development. You can see here just like in June 2021, Atlantic Shores offshore wind. Then in December, they complete the acquisition of Sevion LSC, a large utility scale solar. And then in January 2022, they announced that Shell and Scottish Power had won bids to develop five gigawatts of floating wind power in the UK. Um, they started operations at the power to hydrogen electrolyzer in China. So you can see a lot of investments are also going into their future, uh, more clean energy portfolio. So this kind of news you don't see a lot um, with the US oil majors. And for me, this explains why there's such a difference in capex compared to the operational cash flow, which is good. I think it means that in my opinion, the European oil majors are positioning themselves better for the future compared to the American equivalents, which therefore also brings a little bit of additional risks, although they have, of course, a much better balance sheet. From the other side, you know, how it, uh, how I expect it to go in the future, if it really come, becomes an issue to ExxonMobil and Chevron, I expect them just to do a major acquisition at that moment in time in a proven cash flow generating uh, company focused on clean energy. So uh, one doesn't exclude the other, right? It's just a different strategy that they are pursuing. Now, then, of course, they are still oil majors, still focused on black oil, as deep black as it can be. Uh, so we also need to look at their reserve life index. So it looks actually quite good for ExxonMobil and also for, for BP. You can see that Shell is on the lower end together with Chevron as well. Uh, what is good to know is that Shell was able to sustain it, actually increases slightly compared to last year, Chevron as well. But ExxonMobil actually did a big increasement and uh, you know they just increased their Canadian uh, assets uh, probably they discovered something so they really added two years of reserve life just by that single asset another thing worth noting then is that B actually reduced its uh, uh, reserve life quite significantly but they were already really high with 15 they only had a reserve replacement of 16 percent and why should you they have a lot of assets so they don't need to invest all the capex now in discovering new oil reserves they have still enough and this is probably keeping them good for the next two three years so the next step then i always look into is like how has the company been allocating their cash based on the free cash flow how have they been rewarding shareholders so let's have a look then now into how the company has been spending their cash flow based on the trailing 12 month numbers so what you can see here is that exxon mobile has been earning the most cash flow from operations than Shell, which is really interesting because we saw that Shell didn't have the largest market cap, but then from free cash flow point of view, 49 billion for ExxonMobil, Chevron 30 billion, Shell 36, 25 and 24 BP. But look at how it is comparing to last year, three times more cash flow, free cash flow for ExxonMobil, uh, also three times more for Chevron, only two times more, let's say for Shell, uh, two times more for total energies and approximately let's say also two times more for BP. So here also compared to a year ago, ExxonMobil and Chevron have been doing much better, but let's look at the cash return, right? Dividends and buybacks. What's probably worth noting here is that ExxonMobil, Shell, Total Energies and BP have been 
buying back shares. And actually, if we look at uh, Shell and BP, actually quite aggressively, 4% reduction compared to last year and 5.3% for BP. The only one difference is Chevron. They have been actually diluting the shareholders a little bit. However, don't worry there, they have been increasing their equity more. This was just natural share dilution. They haven't been buying back really, but they put everything into the balance sheet, into the equity. Also net debt reduction here, look at that, 29 billion reduced. So that's more than half of the uh, cash flow. Same for this as well. These are numbers guys, really large. But then the interesting thing comes is the cash flow payout rate. So if we look at the dividends, then 30%, 35% for uh, ExxonMobil and Chevron payout ratios, but Shell has the lowest payout ratio here together with BP. So no wonder they were also buying back much more uh, of their shares. So if we then look at the, the dividend and the buyback payout ratios, we're still under 60% for all of these. And Chevron has the lowest because they have been focused on paying down debt and increasing their equity. So really focus more on the balance sheet. But look at these numbers, guys. This is really, really, really insane. So all in all, these numbers look really good. But you know, also the dividend hikes are coming in again. For instance, BP just increased, like last week or two weeks ago, their dividend by 10%. While their strategy is to increase the dividend by 4% annually, just like Shell. So maybe Shell will also do a bigger hike again than 4%. Let's see, they can afford it. Also Chevron earlier this year, they did a dividend hike of 6%. We know that ExxonMobil did a really minor dividend hike last year. So maybe a bigger one is coming up. But also if we look at here what Shell is saying, Shell is going just in the next quarter alone to buy back 6 billion of shares. Remember the market cap, this is a 3.3% buyback ratio at current share prices in a single quarter. This will probably put their buyback yield at approximately annually now, a trailing 12 months around 8%. This is insane. So that alone guys should give us a bigger dividend hike than 4%, right? So now that we know this, let's have a look then at whether these companies are still investable because we're probably at the top of the market cycle. Maybe we still can go uh, higher. I don't know. We can also go lower, of course, and we will go lower if there will be, uh, I don't know, a big oil price drop again. For now, I think we are okay for the next one, two years with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, what's going on with the supply chain. I'm not so uh, worried at the moment, but you know, maybe some companies are still really good to invest in right now. Now there are three valuation metrics that you can typically use for an oil major, and I would never look at a single item of them. So you can of course look at the price to earnings. You know, they look really cheap. Let's say Shell here, 5.4, the total energy is less than seven. Don't look at BP because of the write-off they did in the Rosneft uh, partnership that they had. Um, but you know, this looks really cheap. And why do, does it look cheap? Because it's probably at the top of a cycle. So another one to look at is the price to book value. If we look at that, then ExxonMobil and Chevron just sound really expensive. And the European equivalents like Shell and BP look to be at fair value. So just keep this in mind. It's probably good to know, but the real way I evaluate companies in the oil industry is using the dividend discount model. Cash flows are not pre predictable with these companies because you're so dependent on the oil price. But what is predictable kind of is their dividend, specifically if you look at some of the companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron. Also Shell until the 2020 COVID-19 situation didn't cut their dividend since the Second World War. Based on the giant reset, the, I believe this company will not cut the dividend in the next 10 years, specifically not with the balance sheet they're currently building up. The only one that I always doubt a little bit is uh, BP because they, have, they had deep horizon cut the dividend COVID cut the dividend not so not so stable but total energies on the other end is really stable in the dividend payout so if we then go to the dividend discount model look what you do is here you take the dividend per share they currently have you take a discount rate i work with eight percent here uh, approximately i think this is fair expectation towards oil companies then you take annual dividend growth rate now look we have seen that BP did 10%. We did also see that Shell did more than 4%. We saw also Chevron doing 6%. I'm really conservative here because also if you look at it over the cycles and during 2020, they had minor dividend growth rates. So, you know, now they are doing a little bit more, but maybe over the next second part of the decade, they will be do doing lower again. So treat this as an average. If we then look at it, I believe that the current valuation for ExxonMobil is $64. 
Chevron 113, 25 for Shell, 46 for Total Energies, and 600 uh, pence for BP. So if we compare that here, you can see here that currently the share prices are 94, much higher, right, uh, uh, share price. So the only one that comes close to value is probably Shell, and, and BP as undervalued. And this is what I've shown here. You can see that at the moment, Shell is uh, uh, around fair value, I would say. And the only one that's really undervalued at the moment with 28%, in my opinion, is BP. Now, what you can still do here, of course, is you can model uh, the difference here. So if you believe the Chevron will do 6% going forward, and that's more likely, you could say that Chevron at the moment is undervalued because it should be trading at $284, right? Um, if you take uh, 5%, it will be $189. So you can also see that these numbers are really, really sensitive and that's why I'm rather on the conservative end. Having said that, some of these companies also have a really good dividend yield. It's another way how you can look at their valuation. The highest dividend yield at the moment is for BP with 5.5% and Total Energies with 5.3%. Specifically with Total Energies, don't expect a lot of dividend growth. They are really, as a French company, focused now on new energy. Their dividend is almost flat. They hike it with one cent or something like that. I don't expect a lot here. I think BP is really your chance here. But also if we look at Shell at the moment, I expect them maybe to do a dividend hike of 10% again coming up. I expect them to do well, but also still Chevron and, and ExxonMobil. I think just that ExxonMobil and Chevron at the moment are just undervalued for where they belong to be. But you can disagree with me. You just saw what the difference is for um, uh, Chevron here. So I would still at this moment, one year later, look rather at the oil majors in Europe Although if you really appreciate the balance sheet more and you see these more like bond proxies, I think you can still invest today in ExxonMobil and uh, Chevron, but just be aware that share price declines will happen to these oil majors. These are down cycles, there are up cycles, but if you think about it from a dollar cost averaging, I think in all these five, you could actually invest a little bit, but if you really look at it from a value investor point of view, I will go more for BP and Shell at this moment in time. Guys, I think this should give you a clear picture whether these companies are still investable right now. If you like more of this, please subscribe and like this video. And guys, see you next time again.